All right, so product rule question. Uh, it says find the equation of the tangent line. So uh, equation means that we need a slope and a point, or a slope and a y-intercept, right? And we need to put that together to, to make the equation of the tangent line. And what information are we given? We are given the uh, actual uh, function, which is uh, pretty complicated there. It's a product of two things, which is okay. We could use the product rule to find the derivative because the derivative is the key to the uh, slope, right, of the tangent line. So if we want the equation of the tangent line, we need the slope first. And I can find the exact slope because I'm given the x value uh, of, the, uh, uh, of, of the, um, the curve, okay, of the function. So if I've got the x value, I've got the derivative, I can find the exact slope of the tangent line there. And then I'm given a point so I can use the slope and the point in the point-slope form to make an equation. All right, so the most challenging part will probably be finding the derivative here. You have to use product rule, which means we want to do, so the product rule um, is derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. I always start with the derivative of the first function first in both product and quotient rule. You might see, you might see it a, a little bit differently in your textbook uh, or in, online if you study it. You might see this, fg prime plus f prime g. Uh, notice that that's the exact same terms, just switched in order, and when you add them, it doesn't matter the order. So I always, I always go with this one. This is the way I've taught you, and uh, you'll see me use that sort of format. So the derivative of the first, now, uh, the derivative of a constant is just zero, so we don't have to worry about that. This is negative root x. So that's negative one half, uh, I'm sorry, uh, well, uh, let me just, negative x to the one half, which the derivative, right, is one half times one, uh, x to the, po the power of one half minus one. So that's going to be one half minus one is negative a half. So we're going to have uh, negative one half x to the negative one half. Okay, because there's a minus in front, there's the minus there. So the derivative of the first times the second, we'll just um, rewrite the second one. And I'm going to put all of these roots as fractional exponents, okay? Because when we multiply through, if we have to, we can add exponents easily. Okay, so we'll just, we won't touch the, we won't touch the second one, it's just plain old g. So derivative of the first times the second. Now we add, right, we plus, here we add, um, the the first term, so that's 2 minus, uh, whoops, x to the 1 half, I'll write that, x to the 1 half, times the derivative of the second, so it's going to be 0, uh, this is going to be positive 1 half x to the negative 1 half, um, plus 3, so 0 plus 1 half x to the negative 1 half plus 3. All right, so we're good here so far. Now, we do not need to simplify anything here, okay? So if I ask you, if the question says um, find, the, um, find the derivative and simplify, then you would have to simplify gather like terms and then ex show the expression for the derivative. We don't have to do that here. We, what we need is an actual value for the derivative, so you do not have to simplify. What you need to do now is take the x value of 1, because that's the point of tangency, and you need to put 1 in wherever you see x which this is going to be real easy, right? That's a super easy thing to do. Um, y prime, so we're going to have uh, 1 to the negative 1 half. That's 1 over square root of 1. You see that? So that's just 1. So this is going to be negative 1 half times 1, okay? 1 plus times 1 plus, again, x to the 1 half, that's square root of 1, so that's 1, plus 3 times 1 is 3, okay? Um, so then plus 2 minus, so again, x to the 1 half is just 1 square root of 1, so that's just 1. And we have 1 half times 1 over root 1, which is just 1, plus 3. So x being 1 makes these real easy. So I'm going to pause here, and I want to make sure that, um, whoops, that you understand. Oh, something disappeared on me. So I want to make sure that you understand like that these turn into these when I have one there. Okay. Okay. Is everyone okay with that substitution? So the square root of one is one. One over the square root of one is one. Okay. All right. So the derivative, and this could be, you could 
show this as notation like the y prime evaluated at one because that's what we've done we've put one in there uh, or you could just go ahead and say the slope the slope here is this is what we're finding out the slope at one so this is going to be um, uh, negative one half times two plus three is five plus one times one half plus three so that's three and a half or seven over two uh, and again in calculus, we want to try and work with fractions uh, or uh, you know exact values as much as we can. So decimals in this case would be okay, but um, fractions would be better. So this is negative five over two plus seven over two. So negative five plus seven, that's seven minus five is two over two. So it looks like the slope is one here. Everyone okay with that? Yeah, I think that is, that's correct for the uh, slope. So we're halfway through. We've got, actually we're more than halfway through, but we've got the slope of the tangent line because we found the derivative and we plugged x equals one into the derivative to find the exact slope uh, at this point. Now, to find the equation, you need to go a little bit further and we'll use the point-slope form of, an equa of a line, the point-slope form. I'm gonna just uh, erase some stuff here to make some room. So m equals 1, we'll remember that. But the point-slope form, I'll do this in red, is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's just a manipulation of the slope formula, uh, right? m equals y minus y1 over x minus x1. That's just a rearrangement of the slope formula. And this is an equation of a line, it's called the point-slope form. So we have a point, and, and we found out that the slope is 1. And so I simply go ahead and, and uh, just follow through with this. So why? I keep y by itself because in, a, in an equation for an oblique line that's a slanted line, we have to have x and a y in the equation. If it's vertical, that's just x in that equation. If it's horizontal, that's just y. But uh, we'll leave the y there and we'll leave the x there and then we'll plug in our point values in here and here. So y minus the y value of this point is 5 equals m is 1. x we'll leave as x and x1 will put the, the x value of the point, so it looks like that, okay? Now, this would be actually, this would suffice, um, this would suffice for an answer right here. Uh, it, that's not the best because it's, it's tougher to graph, but that would be technically okay. That's in point slope form. Um, but we usually go to y equals mx plus b, so I would encourage you to do that. Um, I'm gonna multiply this through, that's gonna be x minus one, and we're gonna add five to both sides. So this is gonna be, um, x minus 1 plus 5, or y equals x plus 4. Uh, so let me check a few things. Yeah, y equals x plus 4. Um, this is point slope form. In the textbook, you might see different forms like the standard or general. So if you have like, uh, uh, if we make, put everything over to one side, that's a general form, I believe. So this would be 0 equals x minus y plus 4. That's general form. And then if we have the x and y on one side and the constant on the other, x minus y equals negative 4. That's, I believe, standard form. So any one of these forms that I've circled technically is an equation for a line. It's just a bunch of different types of forms. Uh, certainly the one I would suggest that's easiest to graph and one that we've had the most experience with in math classes leading up to calculus would be y equals mx plus b. Okay, so questions, thoughts, misunderstandings, clarifications required, yeah? To simplify the, um, the derivative? Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, if I, just, if I just gave you this equation, the y equals, and I said find the derivative and simplify, then yeah, you would do this part, and then you would simplify by multiplying, uh, like distributing, and then gathering all like terms. Let's do that, sure, sure, let's do that. So this is not what the question requires, but let's go ahead and, and just uh, work on that because that's a good question and that, that is something that you need to know how to do as well. So let me just take away this stuff, okay? And I'll zoom back in just a bit here, yeah, I'll get back to 100. Okay, so, yeah, let's do that. So uh, what we would do then, if we didn't plug our values in necessarily, uh, we would have to uh, expand. So this is one single term here. 
That's going to multiply by 1, it's going to multiply by x to the 1 half, and it's going to multiply by 3x. So that's going to be what this first grouping is. And then this one is a binomial times a binomial, so we'll have to do the FOIL method. We'll have to times this, times this, times this, and this. So let's do one thing at a time here. So um, negative 1 half x to the negative 1 half times 1. Okay, so to simplify, the negative exponents too uh, would be, uh, you would write those as positive exponents. And because the question has square roots, you would have to change like a 1 half into a square root back again, okay? So what's this going to be? This is going to be negative 1 over 2, and then times 1 here, so that's going to be x to the negative 1 half, which is going to bring that down to the denominator, to be x to the positive 1 half, which will then be written as root x. So this times this, the first multiplication is going to give you this. The second multiplication, um, we have a, a negative times a positive, so that's going to give you a negative here. And then we're going to have 1 half, again, 1 half, and then we have, look at this, x to the negative 1 half and x to the positive 1 half. So on the side, I'm going to do that on the side, if we have x to the negative 1 half times x to the positive 1 half, what we do is uh, we add the exponents. So negative 1 half plus positive 1 half is x to the 0. So that's just 1. Okay. So that would be like square root of x divided by square root of x. So that turns out to be. So negative 1 half and it would be just times 1. All right. Oh, are you with me so far? Is that, is that looking okay? All right. So we'll do this term again times the third one times 3x. So that's just going to be, it's going to be negative. It's going to be 3 over 2 and then a, a root x. Oh, 3 over 2 root x here because that's going to be a negative 1 half in the bottom as well. So that's our first grouping when we multiply that out. And we're going to be able to see, you see we have common, we have like terms here. Okay. Like, we have 1 over 2 root x and 3 over 2 root x. Those are like terms. So we're going to be able to combine those a little bit later. All right, so let's erase all this over here. Okay, and now we're going to do FOIL. So 2 times 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Well, 2 times 1 half, that's just a 1. So that's 1 over x uh, root x. Okay, that's just x to the negative 1 half. Uh, 2 times 3 is plus 6. And now I move to the second uh, piece here. So I have negative times a 1 half. So that's going to be minus 1 half. And I have x to the positive 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. So again, we said that's just 1, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm done there. Um, and then I have, uh, I have this x to the negative x to the 1 half times 3. So that's going to be minus uh, 3, oh, 3, oh, sorry, 3 root x, that's a positive. So minus 3 root x, because that's a positive 1 half, right? So again, it, it, it gets a bit messy. This one would definitely be a bit messy. At this, at this point, all right, at this point, they didn't ask you to simplify this, because this, this is a tougher simplification, but this is one you're going to have to know how to do. So it's a good question, um, for sure. And if you, can, if you can do this, then you can do any of the ones that you'll be given. So uh, let's gather some like terms if we can. Um, okay, let's, let's see what we got here. So again, we have, these two are like terms for sure. Okay, um, This one is almost a like term. I mean, uh, we could do multiply top and bottom by 2, and actually that's a like term now. So it would be good to kind of add all three of those together. Okay. So 2 root x on the bottom, those pretty easily to get those to uh, common, uh, common denominators. So negative 1 minus 3 plus 2. So that's negative 4 plus 2, that would be negative 2 over 2 root x. Okay, when we combine those three, you got that? And yes, we're going to be able to simplify this a bit more because we have 2 over 2 there. So next, next step, we'll do that. Uh, I have negative 1 half, negative 1 half. So that's minus 1. 1 half minus 1 half. That's minus 1. Okay, so those are gone now. Uh, and then I have plus 6. So I'll write that down. And then I have minus 3 root x. Minus 3 root x. Okay. So um, probably, you know, you'd have to do one more step to cancel these and to gather these like terms, and that probably would be enough. So I have negative 1 over root x. Uh, I have plus 5 
minus 3 root x. Those are all unlike terms. Uh, the order doesn't really matter too much, um, but that's, that's maybe what, how you would simplify that difficult. Uh, that, that would be fine. That would be enough for you guys to, to do it just to, that far. Okay? Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? All right. So that was number five with the bonus plan of, of simplifying a, uh, a derivative.